Hey, good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. I'm Nilesh Patiria. I'm working with Cloud Innovation Lab at CTO Group in Cisco Cloud Services and Arcan Owens. So today I would be discuss, uh, discussing about ship products. Uh, this is the product that we have been building for last four months. This is uh, uh, in the Innovation Lab. And we started like building this product for building microservices. Uh, so developers who are trying to build these microservices can use this product to, to uh, for, uh, f can use this product. So we thought of like if we are if we are if we are promoting microservices, we should also be using the microservices architecture internally. So that's what we will look at. So what we are going to look at is like basic introduction, and we took a lot of decisions during this last four months, and why I will go through why we took those kind of decisions and what what initiated those decisions. And we also make a lot of architectural choices, so we'll look at what kind of choices, why we took those particular specific choices. And finally, how this microservices help us in project management. So there is like a balance between like big monolithic project management and microservices project management. So how this particular architecture help us even in project management. So we'll look at that part also. And finally, we'll conclude. So just to start with, like, so what is Shift? So Shift is a hybrid DevOps platform that enables developer to easily build, deploy, and run microservices application. Uh, and these application, we we actually promoting like containerized application for these microservices. We will go into a bit more details out there. So so this is like I will I will take two, three minutes to like walk through what shape is, then we will go into like microservices part. So this is like a shape is a product which is like from end-to-end -end developer perspective. So you have like project management, then developer tools in your laptop, and then source control, continuous integration, continuous development, or application orchestration, service assurance, and issue management. So what we looked at is what are the most popular kind of tools that developers are following. And we started using those tools. So something like GitHub is like uh, it's pretty much popular, and each or each and every developer want to go there. So that's our first choice, kind of for source management as well as issue management. Then we look at like how how developers are developing their application on the laptop. So Vagrant is becoming more and more popular for your local dev environment. So that's where Vagrant with Docker combination gives you like a perfect perfect choice for making your microservices application running on your laptop. So similarly, we looked at like where CI pipelines are going. So Jenkins and that kind of world is there. That's good if you have an administrator sitting out there and making, setting up your pipeline for you. But new generation of CI things are, or continuous integration is giving power back to developers. So they, they want like developer to configure what the environment is and how that should be looking at. So we will look go more into detail. So we, pro we choose a product called Drone, which is pretty new product, and we are also contributing to it. And we are, it's an open source project, so we will look into it. So, so th uh, that's why we look at different choices. We will go a bit more into detail. Uh, so this is at like 10,000 feet view, what Shape does. So a developer comes in, they register, they start registering their project into Shape. And as part of this project, they create multiple microservices, and they can choose what kind of languages or build pack they want to use. And the, the, we, we set up GitHub repository and CI pipeline for them. And, and at the end, when they were trying to deploy, we deploy on this infrastructure, which is based on Mesos Marathon, which runs on multiple data centers on Cisco Cloud. And they can also publish their application to marketplace. Uh, and at the same time, they can also run the some complete cluster of this application on their laptop. So coming to, like, say, uh, Architecture of this particular product. So we, uh, we, so this is from innovation lab. So we didn't have very big team to start with. So although we started very small, we started with like kind of day one. We started with single pizza size team, which is like three four percent team. But on the day one, we thought of like these are the uh, we are going to build it as a microservices in longer term. So day one, we decided like we would identify what would be the services are and how we are going to build individual services. 
So, but uh, so we build them one by one for a month or so, and then we grow, when our team grow up, then we started building a, other auxiliary services. So something like so we started with the core services, which implements all our APIs and interfaces. And so we also impl started implementing like build service, which actually does the build and compilation and deployment, which internally uses drone service. Uh, and we also have like deployment service, which deploys this particular application or dockerized container application to microservice infrastructure, which is hosted on multiple cloud services. So these are set of services that we started building it. So if you look at like timeline wise, uh, so if you are going with this architecture, you don't have to build like everything from day one. Uh, you don't have, so because like typically the project then they grow, so you don't have like full budget and day one. So what you can do is you start with your core services and when your project gets some kind of acceptance, then you can start building those auxiliary services. So something like law, uh, event service, metric service, uh, they, these services can wait for lo later point of time in your this thing. But if you are writing your right architecture, and if you if you can mock these services in initially, but later on, you can keep on building these services. So something like what we did is like day one, we kind of identify these are the services that we are going to build, and we validate the idea. That time we didn't consider like implementing each of the services, but we validated like pretty quick prototype in a two weeks kind of thing which was like monolithic, but after that we started breaking up these micro into microservices. So we started with a couple of services and as teams were growing, we keep on adding like services which we feel like we need it. So in last four months, like recent service, we are say, adding is kind of logging service. So we started with basic logging initially, but now we are going with like full Kafka, Kafka backend based logging service. So those are the things, so you can start, if you have, in, microservice interfaces defined, you can even change your backend. So some of these things like logging service, or uh, we started with very basic logging, which is like Golang we are using, so Golang based logging service. But later on we go ahead and like right now we are changing the same interface, but backend we are changing with like more scalable like Kafka based uh, backend service. So those are the things that you can do. So that helps like balancing act about uh, you are you are choosing the right architecture, but not spending too much time in bit uh, earlier. So, so you can have later on like teams which are dedicated for micro uh, for logging service. Like there is a separate logging service team that we have three person team which are trying to build like complete uh, scalable logging service out here. So, so I would come to like some of these specific choices that we have done. Uh, this was kind of one of the toughest one to do what what CI platform or build platform to use. So typically Jenkins is very popular one, so so there was like, it was very difficult not to go with that. Uh, so we have to internally justify ourselves why we are not going with it. So, so we looked at like what developer wants. So developers are actually looking for more control in defining their CI pipeline. So they want like uh, they want to dictate like what tools should be running on my slaves. They want to dictate how a script should be done, and I should be able to change and moderate it very frequently. So so this is the this is the product that we came across like drone. So there are quite a few product but uh, in the similar kind of architecture, but this is the open source project that we found. What this does is uh, it has it is built up day one considering like all your slave would be uh, docker containers so it goes ahead and build or build and unit test your code within docker container and it has support for like publishing your output as a docker container you can create docker container as output and publish to different like we were earlier publishing docker hub now publishing to bin tray so those are kind of things that that we find other 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 interesting stuff that it does is like uh, you can have Mm -hmm. developer can define their own Docker image. So they can say, I want XYZ tool to be installed on slave, so they don't have to go to single administrator or somebody and they, 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 and say that I want to install like Maven on this particular thing. They, they define their Docker image and say, run my build in this Docker image. Uh, that's kind of. 
So this makes pretty flexible. Uh, although this this product is still building up, so we have our two three percent team who is also contributing to, to this open source project. The next come like uh, we are choosing like uh, Docker as like packaging for microservices. So next come like how are we going to deploy this Docker instances or what clustering to choice, what clustering tool for this Docker instance should we use? So we started looking at around, this was like four or five months back, things have changed from that time, but so we thought like we have to have choose one default one, but so we started looking at what are the options that are available. So we have like Mesos, Marathon, uh, this is from Mesosphere, then we have Kubernetes coming from Google, and we have Docker Swarm and Mesos Kubernetes. So these are like key top four choices that were coming in, and so we, we, we lean toward Mesos because, uh, because one reason is Mesos is generic scheduler, and in parallel, in no, we are using Mesos not just for like Docker, Docker installation, but we also are building a lot of data framework, big data framework on top of it. So what we are building is like Mesos with Spark, Mesos with Cassandra, Mesos with uh, Hadoop, and those kind of things. So that, that, that makes our like kind of uh, took us toward Mesos uh, as compared to some of these other. So Docker and so on were pretty new at this point of time, so uh, it was kind of out. Kubernetes was kind of competing, but since Mesos had other, other advantage, so we choose our Mesos marathon. And that time Mesos Kubernetes uh, uh, connector was not available, but I think last month they released kind of Mesos Kubernetes connector, so we might be supporting that thing in the near future. So uh, at this point of time, we choose like Mesos Marathon as a default uh, kind of thing, but we, we, we plan to support multiple of them. So this is like for our infrastructure deployment, how things looks like. So each of our controller node has uh, Mesos running, Marathon running, and we have Zookeeper and Registrator running on each of this container node, and each resource node also has slaves for this Mesos and Marathon running. That, that's where our containers get deployed. And we have like a couple of components you can see like registrator out there, uh, which actually I will come to it, what it is used for, and on, and we have DNS master running. So we will come to it. So this is how, uh, how we look at like, say how we support like this Docker cluster uh, installation on multiple data center. So each single data center is something we looked at earlier, but we are using console uh, at the back end. Console is something like uh, uh, similar to Zookeeper, but it supports like multiple data centers as well as DNS discovery based on the services you have registered to it. So we are using console for like service discovery as well as for uh, exposing like DNS entries for these discovered services. Uh, and what happens is like as soon as like docker container comes up in this cluster on a particular node there is there is a registrator component sitting out there which listens for this docker event and registers that particular docker container on console which is like kind of service discovery registry and that is exposed as dns to our uh, to to our application servers sitting out there Uh, this is a bit more details on that part. So if you look at like whenever new container comes up, there is a registrator which is listening for event from Docker. And it goes ahead and registers that particular information uh, into console. So that console is aware of for XYZ services, there are 10 number of Docker running on these, these instances uh, with this particular port. So that kind of information is there. Then we have like console template which goes ahead and modify HA proxy so that finally we have like service one on XYZ data center uh, is exposed as kind of DNS entry to other application. Uh, other, uh, other, th other thing was like, uh, uh, this was although we needed it from day one like but we started with SQL as starting point that was easier to do it. But 
since we knew like we are going to go toward Cassandra to support multi center multi data center deployment so we didn't start using join and all those things initially and since we are going with microservices having independent so our our queries are not that complex in this case since each microservice is just storing and retrieving data so so that is something to consider like if you plan to like grow your service across data center just even though you can start with some some kind of simpler sql server but make sure like you are you are not making your queries too complicated so that later on you can't migrate to something like cassandra or that that doesn't have that kind of support Yeah, so uh, this is this is a uh, interesting thing. So this is how we, coming from project management point of view, uh, what happened to our team? Like we started like four or five months back, and uh, uh, we have four or five engineers sitting out in room, like uh, brainstorming this particular idea. Uh, what should we building around, like for to enabling developer to have microservices? So. We started with like basic one pizza kind of size team, and 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 we come up whiteboarded for three days continuously, like come up with this this kind of like architecture on day one. And but we thought like we can't start this big because uh, nobody is going to approve that kind of budget on day one. So we started pretty small. So we first validated idea with like uh, basic prototyping for first couple of weeks. And once we demoed this prototype, we kind of get go ahead with a little bit bigger team. Like so, we started with kind of two pizza size team. And so then we started building like actual microservices, core microservices that we can demonstrate. So uh, so our kind of first demo was like core microservices with uh, with CLI just uh, deploying those things. After that, we kind of get like bit more push, uh, bit more like support from upper management, and then we started building user interface and then event service, and started like that point we started migrating from SQL to Cassandra. But if you look at like point three release, we had like team size grow from like uh, around 15 to 20 person. That time we realized like those uh, daily scrums are getting too bigger for us and. And we are spending like 30 to 45 minutes of time and not getting real output from it. So that time, what we decided is like we we split like uh, scrums per microservices and also created like uh, a scrum of a scrum kind of thing, 15 minutes. So that 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 way we gave like uh, each services. Uh, you can go ahead and if you can make your service scalable in 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 at a scale and. So you are free to like design your thing, and you are free to like iterate your thing within your within your domain. Uh, so that's what the approach that we took. So so uh, once we reach that particular point of time, we realized like uh, it's good to like spread those uh, actual team. But before that, it was uh, pretty okay like to even continue with like 15, 20 percent. So yeah, so since since sprint four, we, three we kind of split the scrum, and now we have like three four scrums which are working in parallel. But we meet like uh, leads meet so that we are in kind of thing. Yeah, so uh, so kind of concluding this, what kind of learning that we have. Uh, so if you are trying to build a microservices, uh, it's uh, it takes like a bit extra effort to like build end-to-end -end microservices rather than monolithic. But if you design it on day one and you can still build it when you have like right resources. And when you are doing evaluate each each microservice for scalability across data center and for its own own kind of scaling independently. And a couple of things that we realized is while we are doing these things. So, if you are if you are building independent microservices with standard interfaces, it's easier to change it internally. So, in this point of time, like we change even within four months, like we migrated earlier. We were using like Docker Hub for private Docker repository. We migrated from that to Bintray, and so our other services were hardly impacted because of this because they have like uh, standard interfaces. Similarly, uh, logging service, we are basically using basic logging, but we come up with something similar to like if you have heard of Juice, there's a demo going on. 
uh, which is more like a scalable Kafka based logging service. So, but you can replace those kind of services. Similarly, Matrix, we started with basic graphite, uh, graphite based service, but now we are moving toward more like Kafka plus, plus kind of uh, storm based service. So th those services, like you might not be able to build like complete scalable service on day one, but if you if you put your architecture right, then you would be able to like just replace the services without impacting your core services. Yeah, so this is what I have. Maybe I'll just take some questions if you have. All right, do we have any questions? Yes, we do, right up front. Okay. So was your team, uh, as you started those, was it mainly developers or were there like two developers and a project person or you mentioned Scrum and... Yeah, so when we started, uh, so we, I come from like Cisco um, Innovation Lab team, so we only are engineers at the end of the day. So we started with like engineers, so we have like a couple of engineers who are looking for like uh, services side, couple of started looking at like microservice infrastructure side. So like how we are going to deploy those are key component that we identified. So we, we added like uh, project manager only if you look at like uh, or scrum master only around like 0.2 or 0.3 kind of thing. So till that point of time we were just working like all engineers. Uh. Any other questions? All right, Neelish, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you.